Hey everyone, this is Eric Dorn. In this video, let's talk about five things you need to know to determine what personality type you are. And so this is my self-discovery starter pack. I offer a self-discovery starter pack to all my patrons on patreon.com slash Eric Dorn. This is basically the core of that package. So the number one question that I get about the MBTI and about personality types is, well, I feel like I have multiple personas that I tend to switch between, right? So I Many people feel that they are different than work compared to who they are when they are with friends or with family or, for example, who they are by themselves, right? And that's important to remember. Yes, for example, at work, I tend to be a lot more conscientious, a lot more introverted and a lot more practical in how I go about things. Meanwhile, in my hobbies, I tend to be a lot more creative, a lot more agreeable, a lot more social, and most of all, I tend to be much more creative and free flow in how I approach things, right? So, of course, people have different personas, but ultimately, you tend to be the most yourself when, one, you're by yourself, right? So you're not adapting to other people. You're not modifying yourself or putting on a mask because you're by yourself and you're allowed to be yourself, right? And number two, you're the most yourself when you're around people that you trust and like, right? So when you're around people that you feel a connection to, people that you know well, and people that you feel safe around, of course, you'll be more like yourself. And number three, you're being gonna be the most yourself when you're engaged with hobbies and activities that you find fun. And so learn to detach a little bit from who you are at work and how you tend to act in group settings and things like that. Like focus on really the core of you, the dominant sides that you display when you feel the most safe, the most confident and the most comfortable. Question number two that I tend to get this, well, I feel like my personality is constantly shifting and changing, right? And here, okay, yes, definitely people's personalities are changing. So if people tell you that personality types are fixed, well, actually, most science suggests that people do change over time. And we know that people become different when they practice on an activity or learn or memorize or study for something. Of course, a new environment, a new place and time is going to allow you to do different things. But change is usually a lot slower than what you think. It's rare for a person to go from being very shy and very reserved to suddenly becoming very outgoing and very extroverted, right? So these changes do happen a lot more slowly than what you think. And often they feel more dramatic than what they really are. And so if you take personality tests, for example, you might notice that you feel very different. But when you take the personality test, you still get the same result as you usually get. Maybe you got a little bit higher on extroversion. Maybe you got a bit lower on it, you know, but ultimately, it's only about a couple of points, right? So it does take time, it takes effort, and most people only show drastic changes if they are experiencing extreme mood swings or if they have traveled to the other side of the planet or found themselves in a completely new situation, right? So in general, most people tend to have a pretty consistent personality that only changes very slowly and very gradually. It does change, but it changes very slowly, right? Number three, you need to remember that there are different systems and inventories and of course they, while they have similarities, can sometimes be different. And so you gotta look at the questions that are being asked. The big five test might, for example, measure your outgoingness. And so how much do you take initiative in social settings? How social are you? Things like that. An MBTI-based personality test might focus more on whether you have extroverted values in, or not, right? So they might say, do you like people? Do you find it energizing to be around others, right? And so you might answer differently on these questions. So often when you take personality tests, it's most important to take away and to remember, what did I say about these things? What are my patterns? Well, I noticed that I'm outgoing and I noticed that I find it's enjoyable to be around other people, but I also noticed that I tend to answer strongly agree on eating a lot of alone time. So, you know, like rem remembering these things also helps you see the nuances in your behavior, because of course, these are just general categories. Extroversion and introversion are general categories that can contain multiple subcategories and multiple different definitions. So definitely embrace it as a smorgasbord where you can learn so much about yourself beyond just the superficial things. There is so much to discover about you. And if you end up getting typed in different systems, perhaps you take the DISC, perhaps you take the MTI, perhaps you take the Enneagram, perhaps you take, you know, the big five, you know, 
no matter which one you take, you know, remember that, yeah, okay, so in because this system is like this and talks about it like that, I get this type. And because this system talks about it like this, I get that type. And, you know, understanding that these things are different helps you also understand yourself better from different viewpoints. Number four, personality is a spectrum, right? Okay, so what that means is that, you know, you got the extreme introverts that feel very introverted in most situations, right? Most of the time they prefer to be by themselves, they are not very outgoing and so on, right? But you also get people that are only moderately or slightly introverted. And these people can feel like they're a bit in the middle. And so if you feel like you're a bit in the middle, that's okay. You can say that you are only slightly introverted. And that's why I tend to propose to people use a lowercase instead of an uppercase when they talk about their personality. Instead of saying you're an uppercase E, say you're a lowercase extroverts, right? Instead of saying you're an uppercase intuitive, say you're a lowercase intuitive. So because maybe you only display some of these traits, some of the time, but not most of the time, right? So understanding that and seeing the nuances in it can also help you be more accurate in how you talk about yourself and other people. To say that somebody is a judging type when they're only slightly judging can be slightly inaccurate, right? Because they're gonna compare themselves to other judging types that are hyper-conscientious, hyper-organized, and they're gonna feel like I'm not that organized, right? And it's uh, much better and much more precise to have and see the spectrum and the varieties that are within personal. Number five, the most important thing to remember is you are the most yourself when you are in flow, right? So if you're having a bad day, if you feel stressed, if you feel anxious, if you feel low on energy, if you feel like you lack motivation or if you don't feel safe at, or comfortable at the moment, of course you're not going to act like yourself. Most people, you know, they'll try to be themselves as often as possible and they'll try to stick to their dominant strategy, which they like and enjoy the most whenever it is possible. But of course, a person that's anxious will experience stronger shifts in their behavior because they might be more valuable to other people. They might worry more about what other people think and so they might adapt more to fit in. Or a person with lower energy might, while they want to do a certain thing or while they might enjoy a certain thing, they still find it hard to go out and do it because they lack the energy to do so, right? So remembering those things I think are key. And lastly, number six is a bonus. Remember that personality is about healthy differences in behavior. Personality is not the same as, for example, neurodivergence, ADHD, autism, dyslexia. Personality maps normal and healthy and average shifts in behavior relative to other people. And so, you know, when you talk about personal type, the stereotypes that you imagine usually don't exist or are very unhealthy. A person that is extremely introverted or extremely extroverted belongs in a lunatic asylum in the sense that, you know, such a person could never be alone or vice versa. They might never be able to be around other people. They'd just be too anxious to function, right? And so if you feel like your personality is not healthy, right? If you feel like uh, you're very limited by who you are, if you feel like you're often anxious socially, if you feel like you struggle with working memory, memory, attention, if you feel like you struggle with focus, if you feel like it's difficult for you to deal with any form of change, if you feel like uh, you know, you're extremely irritable or get angry very easily, that's not a personality trait. That's something that uh, you know, most likely you're gonna need to talk about with somebody. If you feel like something is significantly impacting your ability to function in society or to be happy, you're gonna need to ask for help about that, to talk to somebody, to journal, to reflect, to think about why that is, and to think about what strategies you can use to deal with and better manage that. And, you know, to some extent, you know, you can train and you can develop, you can improve, but to some extent, you know, we're also forced to kind of deal with the things that we're born with. And while we can modify things to an extent, we also need to think about, you know, how can we accept ourselves for who we are and how can we learn to work around it, right? So in this sense, you know, uh, that's the most important thing to remember. Think about, you know, how you act and think about whether how you act is healthy. Think about if it serves you, if it gives you what you need, if it helps you build deep connections with others, if it helps you be successful at work, if it helps you, you know, feel happy and manage your energy. That's the most important thing. And if that's the case, then it's a personality trait. And if you feel like, on the other hand, that it's something unhealthy and that it's bad for you, it's most likely some form of trauma or issue or struggle or neuropsychiatric problem that you might need to think about, right? That's 
my six tips for you as a newcomer. I hope this helped you. And if you're interested in learning more, check out my self-discovery starter pack on patreon.com slash Thank you to everyone that supports my channel and see you all in the next video.